Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video episode on the Forgotten Weapons Library. Today we're taking a look at Webley and Scott Automatic Pistols by Gordon Bruce. Uh, we've looked at at least one of Gordon Bruce's previous books, that was Evolution of Automatic Pistol Designs, which was a really cool book, and so I was eager to uh, take a look at this one, which is a much more in-depth study of one very specific subject, obviously, Webley and Scott Automatics. Uh, generally in the U.S. there doesn't seem to be a whole lot known by most people about these kind of odd blocky looking uh, British automatic pistols, but really the whole development of the series um, from its beginnings all the way through into the 1920s was uh, the work of a single guy, uh, William Whiting. He, his father started work for Webley & Son before it merged with uh, the Scott Company as a, a gunsmith and William, uh, William Whiting went into uh, work himself as an apprentice and ended up spending his entire career and almost his entire life working for what became Webley and Scott. Uh, he became a fairly notable gun designer and, and he came up with their entire line of semi-automatic pistols as well as a bunch of improvements to their army model revolvers. So why don't we go ahead and take a look inside and you can see uh, exactly how this book is divided up and the various guns that it covers. So, of course, the book starts with a uh, bit of a biography of William Whiting. Nice picture of him as well. Um, some of the history of how he came to work for Webley and the various things he did. Um, this is one of his very early patents for an improved uh, sheathed hammer or hidden hammer revolver. Didn't end up going into production ever. Um, the first major section in the book is actually about the Webley Fosbury, uh, the automatic revolver, which we've looked at in some other posts as well. Um, the, the Webley company actually spent several years, and uh, a significant portion of it was William Whiting's work, uh, revising the Webley Fosbury for production. And this book has a ton of information on it, even down to things like the different uh, types of speed loader devices that were available, um, some developed by outside parties, some by the, the Webley company. So 22 caliber adapters, things like uh, details of the, the different patterns on the outside of the cylinder for the, the, the cocking action. Details like the different patterns on the barrel lug and the different frame dimensions. There's really an inordinate amount of detail here on the Webley Fosbury production schedules. Now when we get to what we commonly recognize as the, the Webley and Scott automatics, it starts with the, uh, the 1903 in 38 caliber, which was never actually produced. It was just an experimental design uh, they built some of them in-house um, and discovered it really had some flaws, never bothered submitting them to the military. So that's the first. And then, of course, into the 1904, which was uh, took the lessons of the earlier model and revised them into something a little more viable. Uh, most of the production guns made by Webley and Scott were actually commercial guns in 32 and 25 caliber. And so there are a lot more of those uh, floating around than the, the larger 455 caliber uh, military pistols. So there is quite a lot of coverage of those as well, um, starting with 1905. And as we go through, the, the bulk of the book covers a lot of the, the minor variations and the, the evolution of these pistols. Let's see, just moving on to a next major section. Um, a bit on the 9mm model 1909. This was 9mm Browning long and it was still um, a, a straight blowback action. Kind of interesting, Webley made these in 22, 25, 32, 380, and 9 millimeter Browning Long, which is quite a variety, uh, more than most pistol companies would end up producing. There we go. Further development, uh, in this case specifically the MP is the, uh, the London Metropolitan Police. Webley designed a, a 32 caliber pistol with some distinctive features specifically for the London Police. And there's the, the history of that and technical description of the guns as well. Uh, now we get to the ones that were actually adopted for military service. That would be the, the Navy model in 455, a somewhat late pistol. This actually did get a military contract. Um, the timing was really unfortunate in that uh, they started producing them just before World War I. And when war broke out, basically the, the pistol was abandoned and everyone ran back to the original, the, the tried and true revolvers. And so the, the, the Webley automatic really kind of fell to the wayside and never ended up seeing 
really significant production. Uh, just a neat picture here, the one, a suppressor adapted model with a, a, a big bulged barrel to thread a suppressor into, a little different than how we normally see that done today. Uh, at the end, there are a couple sections on the, the small caliber pistols that were licensed by Harrington and Richardson for production in the U.S. You see those a lot more frequently here. And lastly, uh, probably the very last pistol developed by Webley and Scott. This was a 9mm, uh, attempted to be an automatic you know, military model pistol developed uh, in the late 1940s and early 1950s that unfortunately ended up going nowhere. So as you can see from a look inside, uh, the Webley and Scott pistols, there, weren't, there wasn't a huge variety of them, uh, but what there was is a huge evolution. Um, they, they continued to tinker and adjust the designs uh, continuously through their, their several decades of production. And Bruce's book, Webley and Scott, Automatic Pistols, uh, does a really good job of, of tracking those design changes and what they meant, why they were done, and, and how to identify what they mean. So it's a really excellent way to take what is generally a fairly poorly known gun, say a 32 caliber Webley Automatic, and be able to discern when it was made and, and all the details about it. It's a great book for that. Uh, these are available on Amazon if you like paying way more than cover price. Um, there are only a few up there. Uh, when I looked before doing this video, it was uh, $218 was the low, the low price. Fortunately, you can also get them brand new through one of our sponsors, Simpson & Company. They have them for the actual cover price, which is uh, a much more reasonable affair. So. Uh, We'll have a link where you can pick it up there. And if you're into the evolution of automatic pistols, the Webley is definitely one that uh, needs to be part of your library. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it.